Hi, I'm Marybeth Quinn, a mixed media collage artist, and today I'm going to talk about the finished work that I did on this painting. Last week I did a video all about rushing the creative process and I used this painting as my example the whole way through. It had been a paint over and I knew when I got done with the video that it, I wasn't done with the painting, but I was still able to talk about the process. And when I went back to work on this painting to really finish it up and find what would make it ultimately work and flow, I thought it was a really, really good topic because what it took for me to finish this painting is really sticking in there to the end and looking for all of those rather small details that make a painting work and flow. And I can say from my own experience and from listening to other artists, I think this is one of the areas that is the hardest for artists to make it clear through because it can look like a painting is done enough but it is sometimes those small little details that really put it over the top make you as happy as you wanted to be with it and really make it work but those small little details are hard to find sometimes you really have to search for them so that's what i'm doing here with this painting in this video and i'm starting with this thin glaze layer because I want the texture and the layers of collage to show through, but I want to even them out and find something that is cohesive and really has a unity to it. So that's what I'm doing here at this stage. Hi, I know these videos go super fast. So if you're interested in this collage process that I use and you would like to learn more about it, I've created a class called Introduction to Collage, Learning to Paint with Paper. I will step you through the entire process. If you'd like to join me, I would love to have you. When I did that video last week on rushing the process, I really began thinking about the different ways that I rushed the process. And this is a big one. In fact, I wouldn't even call it rushing the process. I never even let myself, in some cases, get to this stage simply because I think maybe it's a little bit more difficult. You get things pretty much where you want them. They're pretty good. You like a lot of what you see, but there isn't that, yes, this, this works. And I think in life, maybe in general, we can get to where we're just okay with that. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if I really am trying to excel as a painter and understand things like composition and balance and transitions, I think this is where the work gets really deep. It becomes maybe more tedious, a little more difficult. So I thought that I would make a video where I would slow it down into real time. Everybody says, yay, <laughs> slow it down into real time and let you actually hear me talk about what I feel like is not working, what I think the actual problems are and, and sort of talk myself through and experiment with different ideas that I think might solve the problem. So I'm really going to do that here shortly, but for right now, I wanted to let you in on one of the ways that I decided I wanted to make these tr transitions was with mark making like I'm doing here and also with connector pieces for color, the different color paths that work through the painting finding more flow with that and also with some botanical elements that I had put onto tissue paper. You already see a lot of them here, just the different 
sort of watercolor looking leaves. Um, I, made, I made a number of them and now I'm really going to try to use those as the pieces that will help me connect what I feel like is not working. So sorry for the sideways picture. This was uh, a video that I took for Instagram and thought I had taken one in the correct position, but I, I didn't. So I just flipped it on its side and I wanted to sh just be able to share what's happening here. I'm trying to use that mint green color that's on the right hand bottom half of the painting and just pull it into a little bit of the other side and help that transition from the pink in the upper left going down into the dark blue area. So that was my answer for that and I really that really helped it flow for me. So that's what you're seeing here. Now I'm just doing a little flip and now I'm beginning to experiment with these botanical pieces. And you'll hear my thought process on that. So what I'm really looking for here is a way to tie areas of this painting together. So it looks like it flows, but it also has a lot of contrast. Like I love this area of contrast, but I don't want it to be too abrupt. So I'm looking for ways that I can make these areas logically flow one into the other. One way that I'm gonna try to do this is taking this color, but with a very purposeful form, like something botanical, and just appearing up in this space, just ever so slightly. So I think that's what I'm going to do here. And I'm just trying to figure out exactly where I wanna do that. This is one of those small details that I was talking about. You can just bring that little bit of green in the form of leaves up into that dark area and it just makes that transition so logical and nice and interesting. And here I'm just adding a bit to this flower. That transition from that piece of poetry against that flower was so straight and stark. I'm just adding a little bit of a petal there. So I think at this point, all of the things that are missing from this painting are just little pieces that will tie things together, just connector pieces. And I want them to be subtle, but I want them to be defined enough that they actually do that job of connecting. For instance, I put in some tissue, sort of like this, like what's on here. Some are like ghost prints that I made from other tissue papers that I was staining. So what I put on there was probably something less defined like this. As you can see right there, I just, I want that to be a little bit more discernible. So what I'm going to do to make that happen is just try to do that with paint. So I think what I'm gonna do is get this color of paint right here if I can find it and match it and just make a glaze and go over this. Sort of like in nature where you don't quite know where that leaf or that stem is coming from, like you actually have to search for its source. That's how I want this to feel. And then it's very loosely defined. It's such a subtle way they 
draw one area into the next. I've also been working on this flower a little bit. It had a very straight edge right there because I had put, after I did that, I had put um, a little bit of poetry over it and it really obscured it. And I was liking it, but it just needed, a, again, a little bit of connection to the area next to it. It was a little bit too abrupt and I want this painting to have softer transitions. I don't mind at all if it's wispy on the edges. Let's see what we can do here. And I'll be sure and get underneath those folds. I like to fold them over. I like the texture that it makes. It reminds me very much of what actual petals really do. But I have to really be careful to get all of the folds saturated with glazing medium. It wouldn't be a bad idea to try to connect these two areas again, to maybe try one of my softer little botanical pieces that I made yesterday. I've pulled the green into the blue a bit. I wonder what it would be like to pull a bit of that blue into this green area. Now, I'm not trying to match that exactly. I like how they both show through. I don't know, I have something. I, I like seeing the layers of things. I like seeing uh, not just what's on top, but what's underneath. There's something about that that just feels so relevant to life to me. It's never as simple as just what you see on the surface. And so I like to see that reflected in the work. I want something additional in here. The one thing I love about this one is that it's messy. Some of the leaves are hardly even there. It's just very loose and messy. It's more of a hint of something as opposed to an actual statement, right? I'm also loving how things are emerging out to me like just botanical features like this right here. This piece of paper looks so much like a leaf to me that I think what I want to do is just do um, a light outline with my Kiran Dosh crayon, very messy. Once again, I love that like you don't really know where it comes from. It just sort of emerges out. All the detail there. Okay, so I feel like the other area that really needs a connector piece could really benefit from one is right here. Yesterday I put this green in here and really tied some things over. This was a harsh transition between the pink and the and the darker area and that really softened it but I feel like I still need I need just a little connection. Just a connection. So I think I'm going to try um, one of these right here. Mm, I don't like, I didn't even see it. 
of that line follows this line. It's too similar. So I'm going to see about something like this. I'm an indiscriminate place. Hard for me to get away from that. Sometimes that happens. At least I'm seeing it now. Yes, I think that does exactly what I wanted it to do. So in the end, I did find a number of fixes for my problems, but I'm still working on this area. I am really, really working on getting better at composition and transitions. I thought this was interesting to just see three different evolution pictures of this painting as it moves along and becomes more refined. And here you can see all of the areas that I worked on and the changes that I made to smooth them out, to draw one area into the other, to make them more cohesive, and just work together better in a harmonious way. So here are some of those areas up close so you can see that work. And like I said, this is such a work in progress. I am such a work in progress. I feel like I'm just getting started in understanding how to get where I want to go. And not just that, but how to finish the process, stay with it, not get derailed by trying to rush or finish too soon or skip over some of the most crucial parts of the process. So there are the close-ups. And here is a mock-up of the painting, which I loved it on that color of wall. If you would like to receive some emails from me, just some tips and resources about your creative process, you can find that link in the description, as well as my new freebie resource, the Collage Kit, that will really get you started on your collage journey. It's free. And as always, I really hope that you join me in my class, Painting with Paper. I am loving this class and it's getting really great reviews, so I hope that you join me. And again, I am honored that you would spend your time with me. I truly appreciate it and be sure and subscribe for my channel. Happy painting, you guys.